In this module, we will look at other type of estimates, which are called interval estimates. An interval estimate consists of two numerical values, defining a range of possible values with a specified degree of confidence, most likely includes the parameter being estimated. It is unlike the point estimator, which cannot be expected to provide the exact value of the population parameter. But an interval estimate, also known as the confidence interval, can be computed by adding and subtracting a precision to the point estimate. The purpose of an interval estimate to is, is to provide information about how close the point estimate is to the value of the parameter. Whereas the precision is a quantity obtained by multiplying the reliability factor by the standard error of the estimate. This quantity is also called the margin of error. So the precision equals to the margin of error equals to the reliability coefficient multiplied by the standard error. Whereas the reliability coefficient will be determined by some probability distribution, which our estimator follows, calculated at certain level of confidence, which is one minus alpha. This level of confidence is usually kept at 95%, 98% or 99%. Various probability distribution that we most commonly use and we will be using in our course are Z distribution, which is also known as the standard normal probability distribution, T distribution, which is named after students T distribution, chi-square distribution, and F distribution which is fischer snedeker distribution. The margin of error is the range of values below and above the sample statistic in a confidence interval, which tells us that how many percentage points results will differ from the real population value. Whereas the confidence interval is a way to show the uncertainty in a certain statistic. The confidence level is the probability that the value of a parameter fall within a specified range of values, which is represented by one minus alpha. We measure the precision of an estimate at certain value of one minus alpha using an appropriate probability distribution. Let's say we are here in the, in the diagram, we are given a pretty symmetric distribution. Let's assume it's normal probability distribution. From this point to this point, in between there is one minus alpha. This is gonna be called as the confidence interval. Whereas this region that is highlighted red is going to be called as the rejection region. A 0% confidence level means that you have no faith at all. If any repeat of the survey is done and you will get the same answer. Whereas 100% confidence level means that there is no doubt at all that if, even if we, re we repeat the survey, we're gonna get the same result. In reality, you would never publish the results from a survey where you had no confidence at, at all that your statistic were accurate. The confidence coefficient is a confidence level stated as a proportion rather than as a percentage. For example, if you had a confidence level of 99%, the confidence coefficient would be 0 0.99. In general, the higher the coefficient, the more certain you are that your results are accurate. For example, a 0.99 confidence coefficient is more accurate than that a coefficient of 0 0.89. The other important value is alpha level. A confidence level is one minus alpha, which is the probability that the value of parameter falls within a specified range of values. Whereas alpha level is the probability of making a wrong decision. We try to keep the value of alpha to be as small as possible, which is usually kept at 5% or 1%. There are a few factors that affect the confidence interval. The first one is the population size. This does not usually affect the confidence interval, but can be a factor 
that if you are working with small and known groups of people. Similarly, the other important factor is the sample size. The smaller your sample size is, the less likely it is that you can be confident the results reflect the true population parameter. The other is percentage. Extreme answers comes with better accuracy. The idea behind confidence interval and margin of error is that any survey or poll will differ from the true population by a certain amount. However, confidence interval and margin of error reflect the fact that there is room for error. And this room or room for error is built in, which means sometime statistics could be wrong.